I want to say a big thank you to Wallace. It is Wallace, isn't it? Yeah, Wallace. From... Yeah, all the way from, I think, then, you're going to tell me off. Is it Rio Tia? Rio Tia? Rio Tia? Riruta. Riruta, near Nairobi, which is in Kenya. Is that right? Yes. And you, uh, and you have a fantastic gym called Hood Gym. Now, I was just on Instagram about oh about six months ago, and I was looking, and I seen some girl outside uh, doing some lunges with some chickens, what round by her feet. I thought, what the hell is going on here? So I started following you guys, and I tell you what, I mean, I don't know how it works, but how w when did you start your gym, Wallace? How did it all start? Or when did you first start bodybuilding? And to be honest, how old are you now? How old are you? I'll be turning uh, 33 in two days. 33 in two days? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we've got, the, we've got the candle ready for you. <laughs> for a happy birthday. Thank so, you. So when did you start bodybuilding, Wallace? I started bodybuilding in uh, 2006. Okay. When I was, uh, I was in secondary school, I was in Form 2. In Form 2? And who was your inspiration? So you didn't just get up one day and think, oh, I'm going to start bodybuilding. Did you see a magazine, say, like uh, this one here uh, with Arnold on? Or did you, did you, my good friend here, Dorian Yates, did you, what, what made you, uh, what made you start pumping iron, Wallace? Okay, my first really, the, the real first time I started, I, it was uh, two years before that, in 2006, but it was not that serious because we were just lifting some concrete weights. Fantastic. And uh, it was a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine uh, who had a big arm, you know, in the classroom, and uh, he was like, hey, Wallace, uh, you should come try this thing in our gym. So that was the very first time, that guy is the very first person to inspire me. And did you straight yeah. a, straight away when you started pumping the iron and seeing your muscles, did you think, oh, this is it, this is what I want to do? Actually, my first workout, uh, which was leg day, I mean, uh, the first workout I was like, hi, how? I, I, I thought that people really enjoyed when they were working out. When I, when I would see people working out, the muscle, the pump, I thought it was like, you know, you're feeling good when you're doing it. But my first leg workout, the first time I really trained, I did legs, and it was, you know, it was painful. I couldn't walk properly, and then uh, <laughs> I just rested for a whole week. I didn't walk for a whole week. I was like, hey, man, I'm, I think I got sick <laughs> because my legs were sore, everything. Yeah? And what about your parents? Did your parents think you were crazy? Um, or, you know, did they think, oh, that, this is good that he's keeping fit? Or did they think, oh, my son has gone crazy? No, now let's go back now. Let's go forward to 2016. Now oh. that's when I really started like working out. Okay. And uh, we, uh, me, me and my dad were watching uh, family TV. There's this uh, gospel TV, and they they used to bring Lihani there. Oh, okay. And he was working out. Yeah. Then my dad asked me, "Hey, Wallace, those those small stones that you are lifting at the backyard there with your friends, do you think they'll make you look like this guy?" So he was pointing at Lihani. He told me, look at him. He has a chest. He has big legs. He's all balanced. Do you think you'll get like that uh, lifting stones? I was, yeah, yeah, I will get there. Then he told me, don't you know of a place where they have a gym that you can train like your whole body? Maybe I can pay you a session. I told him I knew of a gym. And then the next day, immediately I got from school. I thought he was joking, by the way. But immediately the next day I got from school. He, he called me even before I removed my uniform and told me, Wallace, let's go. Come, let's go and show me that. Uh, you show me that gym. We went there and uh, he paid my first session, in fact, for three months. Ah. Uh, he paid for my membership. And that's how I started now. And what was the gym like, Wallace? And what, what's, what was the name of the gym? It is another. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. It's called Gold's Gym. No. <laughs> but a very small gym in the ghetto. <laughs> yeah. Like this, like a this A very one. small gym in the ghetto. Like Gold's, like yeah, this. Yeah, they, they, actually, actually, they have that. But when you go inside, it's not like, like the Gold's Gym you see in, uh, I don't know, Venice or the other franchises, the big ones. No, it's just a small gym. But I think the owner liked the, the, the name Gold's Gym. That's why he put it there. And... Uh, yeah, I really appreciate because that's where I, I started now lifting weights, real weights. And the equipment, what was the equipment like in the gym? 
Uh, they were locally made equipment, just like the one um, I built for the hood gym. Uh, some benches there, a squat rack, and then uh, a leg press, and uh, just a few equipments there. But there was a lot of weight, you know, the 50 pounds. I don't know if you 50 pound dumb uh, plates. Yeah, yeah. The one with the small hole, the one with the one inch hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we weighed them. You found one was heavier than the other one. Yeah. yeah, it was never. They were, they were never uniform. That's just the same yeah. as Dino's gym. The Dino's gym, even now, you see the guys, they're, they're lying on the bench and they put one weight on and they put the other and they, and they take it off. They're like, Dino, shit, this is not right. But it doesn't matter. It's 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 <laughs> it's all iron. And 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 when you started training there at uh, goals, did your body start responding very very yeah. quickly? Yeah. In fact, I was I responded very quickly, especially my arms. Well, they were like, you know, they were my biceps, they were responding too fast and it even reached a time I, I, I didn't really like training them because, you see, they were overpowering my triceps and the, my form and the rest of my physique. So, yeah, it was, uh, I, was, I really grew fast, especially the first uh, one year. And did you have... People a, already asking me... Did you have access to yeah. um, uh, magazines and information? How did you get your information for your routines? Did you ask the bigger guys in the gym uh, how they train their shoulders, or how did you how did you have access to any uh, magazines? Like we we can just go to the shops, and you know, must must be a little bit harder for you guys. Uh, you know, like I told you, I used to watch that uh, family TV program by Lihani. Yeah. So I got some ideas from there. And then uh, there's there's some guy who could afford magazines at Gold's Gym. So once once they bought like one magazine, we were like in line waiting for him to finish. When he finishes, he passes it on to me. I read, I finish, I pass it on to someone else. And that's how we got information. And uh, we also experienced with different kind of training uh, from the magazine until uh, you find what works for you. And, and and what about uh, the nutrition side of it? I should imagine, you know, I may be wrong. Uh, over here, you have too many distractions with fast food, with this, with, with all the other stuff. You know, we'll talk about your food because I've written down some of these names of the foods I've seen you guys eat and I have no idea what it is. But uh, have you always yeah. ate, ate good natural food, what your mother's provided and your aunts and uncles? Uh, uh, so was, was the food side of it easy for you to get enough protein and things like that? Here, yeah, actually, there's a lot of food, especially when it comes to to carbohydrate. The only problem is the uh, a bit is the protein is too expensive here. Like uh, you know, the free range chicken. We don't have like uh, what do you call it? McDonald's chicken everywhere, like in the ghetto. No, no, no. You have to go for the for the small. You know, the local small chicken. I don't know if you know them, the small ones. But and uh, they are kind of ex yes. And they are kind of expensive, but uh, that being said, uh, you know, we have other sources of protein, like even though they are not, uh, they, 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 what do you call them? Uh, we Beans, you see, you just eat beans and rice and maybe add some milk there and an egg or two. Uh, that's how we did it. We, never complicated. We just eat what we have here. And what about uh, competing? Did you ever think about competing or what was, have you ever, what, what did you, go and watch a competition, because I remember when I was young, I went to watch a competition uh, in, in this little church, and I opened the door and looked in, and I seen this man come on with all the oil and standing under a light, and I was like, shit, man, that's exactly what I want to be like. So did you ever go to competitions uh, near your home to see anybody compete, any local lads? Uh, no, 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 I didn't go to any competition. The, the first competition I went to, I went to compete, that was back in 2010. And it was uh, on, on a December, a small show uh, from other place called Kericho here. So I went there. I didn't know. In fact, I didn't know anything about dieting. When I was there, we went and slept, and uh, on a, we woke on a Saturday morning. Me and my friend, we went down for some tea. And when we came back, there was one guy who was competing as well, and asked us, "Hey, where are you from?" And we told we told the guy, you know. There's a nice kiosk out there with some very nice tea with a thick milk and uh, some breads, very nice bread. You should go and eat as well. Then he was like, what? You mean you guys, uh, you're taking tea and bread and it's the morning of the show? Aren't you dieting? 
<laughs> and we were like, hey, what, what do you mean dieting, man? You are, well, aren't we supposed like, to eat properly so that we can have the energy for posing on stage? And uh, then after that show, I, I was that in my category. And later I followed that guy and asked him, uh, what is this uh, dieting all about? Then all he told me, whenever you go, uh, you try to go and compete or you're prepping, just eat boiled everything. He didn't tell me about macros, this and that. He yes. told me, just eat boiled, boiled everything. Yeah. But I think because, Wallace, that you have less information, you make better decisions uh, and you don't get hung up by because a lot of this stuff in the magazines is put there to sell certain products and make you eat and drink a certain things in a certain way but with you guys you know you're just thinking right i need to eat this i need to drink this i need to do that so you're listening to your body and not other people and uh, and you've got a mentor i think is his name what is it mishak mishak Chuning? Mr. Yes. Yeah. He's uh, also a Kenyan. The natural Mr. Uh, Olympia. He did a natural Mr. Olympia yeah. show. Uh, I looked on his. Um, yes. I looked on his profile. Man, he has an incredible physique. So, so was he like your mentor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, the, the moment I started competing, because on that show, that the show that I told you, we went to drink uh, tea and bread. Yes. Meshak was there. Yes, In fact, yes. he won. He won the show. And then uh, from that point. Afterwards, I tried to contract him uh, on uh, Facebook. And hold then on, hold on a minute. Let's go back a bit. So, you, so yeah. you're at the show now. Uh, did you have any music for your posing, or how did it all work, and how did you get I, on? I, I didn't have anything, even no music. You know, I, I just thought you go there on stage, then you do this and that. And my, like I told you, I had a, like a big bicep from. Uh, so I knew I had big arms from the gym. I was like, these guys, I'm going there to win. I didn't know about getting dry, you know, yeah. getting striations on your chest, on your legs. I didn't know anything about that. I just thought if you like, uh, you have like an out outstanding physique, they're just big, you're going to win. But I learned my lesson there because the guys who won were like, you know, I knew if uh, I had known anything about dieting, I'll perform better. Maybe not win the show, but I'll perform better in my category. So uh, after seeing Meshak doing the posing, you know, moving with the music, I was like, now this is what I want to do. This is what I want to practice. And then after that, I contacted him on uh, Facebook and we used to chat. I asked him, uh, I have this weakness, my body fat, my, my hamstring is lagging. What do I do? He told me, I do this exercise, some good mornings. And him himself, he trained in, in, a, in, a, in even a smaller gym than, than Gold's gym, the one I was training at. So when he told me about good morning, I was like, what, what's this good morning? What is this? <laughs> uh, it's an exercise. You put your bar here and then you go down like this and you feel it in your hamstrings. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, appreciated his help then. And up to now, he still mentors me, encourages me to keep on pushing. Well, well I tell you what, uh, Wallace, it just shows you what little equipment you need because the guy you're talking about, me, me sharing, uh, his physique is just phenomenal, and, and I, I went to Nigeria once. Uh, I spent a, a, a few uh, a month in Nigeria, and, and I was going around the shanty towns and things, and I couldn't believe the standard of physiques with so little equipment they had. So you know, so so you go from your show, and then you go back to to where where did you start training then to to, to the next level, and what made you start thinking about having your own gym? Uh, that was in uh, uh, 2000 and uh, around 2014. You know, my dad used to make, uh, you know, stoves. Yes. Yeah, he used to weld stoves for 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 schools okay. for cooking food for schools. Fantastic. So we used to do that together. And uh, at that point, I said, "Hey, now I can see we have metal here, and uh, I have the welding machine." Let me try on something. Uh, but this is how I started. You see the gym I was training at, Gold's Gym. Yes. They had these locks, the one with a, like a, a pipe, and then there's a nut on yes. top, and then there's a bolt. You know those kind of locks? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, it reached a time, I told you, my dad paid for my membership there for three months. Yes. And then after that, he was like, you know, Wallace, you have to do something to get your membership, to continue paying, because I have to take care of your sisters. Uh, you have to now. So this is what I did. I talked to the gym owner there. I told him, you know, every time uh, these uh, locks break down, just give them to me. I go and uh, weld them. And that how, that's how I continued training there. So uh, 
And uh, when I started welding, I was like, this thing is easy. I'm, I'm uh, repairing these locks. Why can't I make uh, a bench? You know, a bench is like, this is a piece of metal, this is another one, you just weld there. But now the small nuts for the locks, it was a bit hard, but I was still doing it. So I was like, uh, if I can do that to the, to the small nuts and the small locks, why not try and build a bench? And that's how I started. I started building benches and then uh, buying some weights, putting them under my bed until uh, there were too many. They were lifting the, the bed up sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's how I started, by the way. And then, buying weights, putting them under my bed. Yeah. And then what did then did your friends because I did a very very similar thing. I had a shed at the bottom of the garden, and then I started building some benches. And then because people found out that I had a bit of a gym, then on my front my mother's front lawn, people would leave bits of metal. And my mum would get up in the morning, look out the window, get down here, look, look, what's this on the garden? What's this on the garden? And I had to take it into the shed, and we'd make something out of it. So did 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 your friends start? coming towards you then to start tra training and, you know, to, to, did, they, did they want to start working out with you? Is How did the gym actually evolve? So how did this turn into Hood Gym? Okay. Uh, now, when I, when uh, too much of the metal I was putting under my bed accumulated, I talked to my dad. I told my dad, you know, uh, I, I told him before, but now that I had the weights, first thing I was... Uh, really working on is uh, getting enough weights first, you know, because if, even if you have, bench, you have a bench and you don't have enough weight, it will have, uh, it will have been a challenge to start working out when, uh, you know, guys love training here. So I talked to my dad and uh, he had like uh, a small room. I asked him if I could open a gym there and he, al he allowed me. So I put the benches there and the weights. And once I started training there on my own, I had some of my friends come, and that's how it started. Then I was like, "Hey, maybe I should expand." It was a small room. Yeah. Then I ex I extended. I took I took off the wall. I extended to another one. You see, still building more equipment, and that's how it's going even up to now. So up to now, if you come and peep at the at the entrance of the gym, from outside you might think it's a small gym, but although it's it's still small, but when you peep, you are like, "Hey, this thing goes all the way back because." You know, I had uh, removed all the, the the walls and extended, and I'm still doing it. Yeah, and my friends, you know, these guys have supported me a lot, and I really appreciate. Uh, if they are watching this, I really appreciate for what they did oh, that... for coming and training together, pushing me uh, on my toughest set, and so on. Yeah, they'll be they'll be watching this because this is going to go on YouTube and Spotify and everything else. And I'll make sure I send you uh, this link because you know your story is very very inspirational. Uh, and it, you know people come, sometimes will come in my gym. Oh, have you got this angle bench or this angle bench? And because I started exactly the same as you, Wallace, with literally nothing. You know, you know, you don't need a lot, Wallace. And if you just take your time. Things just build up. And, and when you've got people like your friends who have started with you from the start, Wallace, that bond you have with those guys. I bet you've still got some of those guys with you now from the first day, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, they're still here. And that bond between you guys now in there, it's unbreakable, isn't it? Yes, yes. Because you know, if that thing behind you collapses, you know that if you, you can call them up and they're going to come and help you, and everybody's going to help each other because everybody wants the gym, and that's a fantastic thing. So, yeah. see all the framework and everything behind you. So, who made all that, and where, and and how did you get permission, and do you have to pay rent, or have you have you got electricity in there even? Yeah, there's electricity. There's power. I mean, uh, you know the. The thing is, um, this is my workshop. Okay. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I can yeah, see. You can see the grass. The, the, yeah, yeah, and uh, machines here. You can see my welding gun. This one is connected <laughs> to the welding machine there. In fact, I'm I'm already building. You remember the the the, the photos of the lake you sent me? Yes. I'm already working on it. It's behind here. Yeah. I'm already working on it. Yeah, so uh, as for rent, I'm not paying any rent where I am because uh, it's a small uh, space that my father owns. Okay. So I'm not paying any rent, yeah. And what about simple things like and, uh, uh, security and things like that, Wallace? I mean, you know, I know you, sh you just shut the door of, a, of an evening when you go home. And how far do you live away from the actual gym? 
And is it always secure? No, in fact, no, it's, I don't live, you see, the, this is a workshop. Yes. It's on top of the gym. The gym is beneath. Okay. The gym is beneath here, yeah. yeah. I don't live far, I just live up. And uh, as far as security is concerned, there's not, there's, the security is good here. I've never heard of someone being being mugged or something like that. No, no, no. Oh, oh, no it's, oh, a, it's a safe place and people are friendly. Oh, people are friendly, and and, and as your as your yeah. as as your membership as it started to expand, as do you feel like you need to get bigger and bigger? Uh, are, are, are there a lot of youngsters coming through now as well? The youngster, because I, I see the uh, the girls when they're out doing their lunges with all the chickens around and things, and you can see all the little kids watching. And I, sh I should imagine as the years go on, those kids will want to start coming into your gym. Yeah. So the thing is. Uh... Actually, the way the gym is right now and the equipment we have, it will have been, uh, if it was a, another gym somewhere else owned by somewhere, someone else, I know they would have been charging higher. But for me, you know, I remember the days when I was starting as a youngster, it was uh, hard to get the, the membership money. You know, like I told you, I ended up build, uh, repairing locks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in my gym, I do all the repair for myself. So I don't think someone will come up with something similar, like go and repair my locks. So what I do, I charge them cheap. It's only around, uh, a session is around 150 shillings, which is which I think, I don't know in dollars how much that does it or in your, your currency. I don't really know, but it's a small amount. And I like keeping it that way to encourage all the youngsters to join if you put it, if I put it like I raise the, the, the membership, I'll discourage them, which is not something I don't want to do. I want to build the youth here. A fantastic. Yeah. And good for you. And how many members have you got, Wallace? Do you know how many members you've got? At the moment, I have, uh, I have uh, monthly members. I have 30. 30 members, monthly. Fantastic. But most drop in for sessions. Are they, are they, so people would uh, drive in and, and, and knock on the door and say how much for a session and come and train for, for an hour or two just to try Hood Gym? Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes. So you, let's go back to your equipment. I mean, I was looking back on Instagram. I seen a leg press, uh, a 45 degree leg press. And you made that. I seen the nylon, the nylon, be, uh, the bushes and things. I mean, some of the equipment you've made, Wallace, it's absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, uh, the viewers and listeners won't know, but I sent some pictures over on, on my phone to Wallace yesterday of my yellow seated leg curl, which probably cost me, I don't know, a thousand pound or something. And this guy's going to make it for nothing. Um, uh, how long will it take you to make a leg curl, do you think? Uh, I think around 10 days. About 10 days? 10 days, yeah. The only challenge that I had is getting, you know, those uh, weights. The one that you put, what do you call them? The selectorized weights. Selectorized weights, weights yes. Yeah, but yes, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see down yeah, there. Yeah, I can see, yeah. You see that? Yes. Yeah, I, I bought those second-hand uh, weights from uh, some old machine. Now I have enough weights to make uh, whichever uh, selectorized machine I want. <laughs> but but say if it's not heavy enough, or what do you do then? So say if you get a big guy come in and it's it's only got, say, 40 kilo stack on it, uh, how, 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 can you, how can you make it heavier or do you just do more reps? Uh, that's, that's one option. You can do more reps. Focus on the squeeze and the stretch instead of moving with the whole machine. But uh, I think there's enough weight here for the leg curl. I, I, I counted you as I thought. It, I think it has uh, like uh, 13 plates. Oh, okay. Yeah, I counted on the video you sent me. That's 13 plates. I have more. Maybe I can put 14 for mine. <laughs> yeah. And what what's the next machine? What what machine do, would you would you absolutely love to have at Hood Gym? What machine? Uh, I've used uh, you know the Avenger leg press. Yes. Yeah, that's one machine that, machine I used in a gym I was working at, and I think it's a very good machine. The biomechanics, everything you feel it in your quads. You don't feel it too much in your glutes. You know, like. For us here, I don't know if it is the African genetics or what, we tend to grow big glutes from squatting. <laughs> and I don't like that. I don't like having a big glute. I, yeah, the quad, yes, but not the glutes. So uh, I really look forward. Uh, maybe one day I might get that machine. But as for now, I'm doing CC's. You know CC squats? Yeah, I see. 
they target the quotes more without uh, targeting the group. So, yeah, I'm still doing something to move ahead. I'll tell you what I did see the other day, Wallace. You was doing um, some hack squats, or somebody was doing hack squats, uh, like the old Tom Platt's way, sticking their legs right out. Oh, man, I haven't seen yeah. that since the 80s. That's a hard exercise when you put your toes right back on the platform and your knees bend right over like Tom Platt's. Oh, man. That's a hard exercise. So the guys and girls there train really hard, don't they? Uh, in the hood gym. Or, uh, yeah. The hood gym. The, yeah. Yeah, everybody trains. Everybody. I don't think there's someone who just come here to maybe to be on their phone. Everybody's serious training. And, you know, it's a, it's just a small a small gym. So unlike like a big gym where your mind might start wondering, maybe if you see someone doing some crazy things over the corner there, your mind might, might wander. But, you know, in the, the hood gym, it's a small gym. Just, you see, you can focus more on uh, the training and uh, people pushing each other. Like someone might be on the, on the, at the entrance of the gym, at the pull-down station, and then there's someone else at the end of the gym doing leg press. And the guy on the, on the pull-down shouts to the guy on the leg press when he's fighting his, uh, what do you call them? They all outset. Yes. He's pushing the failure, and he's shouting like, "Hey, strong! Hey, let's go! Come on!" You see, so that's the kind of uh, surrounding that I like, and like a big gym where someone is, you know, and sharing. People like sharing here. Yeah. Like when you are using your dumbbell for for curls, someone might be like, "Hey, can I use them for shoulder just one minute?" You see that kind of uh, relationship. I like it, and uh, people train really hard. You would fit in really well at Dino's gym, Wallace, because exactly what you're saying now is exactly what happens at Dino's. You know, I'll put the dumbbells down and then somebody will come up, hey, hey, old man, can I just use that for a set? And they'll, they'll do it and then they'll pass it back. Uh, you know, and it's nice. It makes you feel really nice and warm inside that you don't, you've all got that camaraderie because these commercial gyms, Wallace, you know, they haven't got what we've got and what you've got there. They haven't got that. Um, and I always say, people like me and you, Wallace, will never be the richest man in the bank. But in here, you can't buy what we've got because, you know, it's like it's like going to church. It's like sometimes, I've, you know, if, if you've had a bad time, we've all had bad times with girlfriends and family problems or someone's passed away or, and you, you know, you're upset. But you go to the gym and you meet your friends and they put their arm around you and you start training, you start talking. And it, it, I find it's, the, it's like my church, Wallace. I go to the gym and I've just come out, I've sweated, I go and eat some good food, I've had some laughs with my friends, and I just feel fantastic. And do you feel, do you get that same thing when you shut the doors of a night and you turn the lights off and you think, you know, because you're doing a good thing there, Wallace, you're doing a great thing. Yeah, I really feel feel good about it, you know, when I'm, I'm in the gym, it's like, no, it might, it's my happiest hour when I'm training. And uh, although the training itself is painful, you know, but you know, I don't know, maybe the body generating the endorphins and uh, whatever, you feel better, you feel good. That's that's another, but then let me tell you, sometimes someone might come in the gym, uh, my reception is just there at the entrance. They come, they are looking low, sometimes they even, they greet me, hey, Wallace, how are you? Then they get inside. Then after just 10 minutes, you hear them shouting from the inside, hey, this big guy. Hey. And then they come back to the reception, hey, Wallace, how are you doing? You see, now that's uh, the, the, the benefit of the workout, how you feel good after training. I don't know if it's the pump, I don't know what they call it, the, the, the what do you call it? The endorphins. Yeah. Yeah, you see, so after training, uh, just a few minutes, someone is already, is already like, I don't know, they feel good. They can even talk loudly. And you see, they came in with their shoulders down, yes. feeling bored, like they, they are being forced to come to the gym. But then after a few few minutes, they feel good. And they are all lighted up. But, but the thing is, Wallace, you know, I know you don't like probably talking about it, but you, you've created that. You know, from your father giving you some membership money and, and saying to his son, go on, son, let's build some muscles and giving you three months membership, you having the drive and the inspiration to look around and think, I can do this. I can build a gym like this gold gym. I can do this. Uh, and then creating that community in, in Ritter, wherever, wherever we call it, you know, you've done a marvellous thing, a marvellous thing. And, and who runs it with you? Is it your girlfriend or your wife? Uh, that's sister. my wife. Is your wife, yeah. Yes. 
And did, yeah. and did she help you? Uh, did she help you uh, uh, running the gym, or is it just you? Yes, she helps me to run the gym, especially when I'm doing my my welding here. She's the one at the gym all the time. Uh, I also do personal training, okay. and uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of hard when you're in the middle of welding to switch on to personal training, then come back switch on to to welding. You know, it's hard. So when I'm doing when I'm building any machine for the gym, she's the one who's taking care of that training uh, my clients and also running the gym as well. Have you got any children? Yeah, I have the three kids, one boy and two girls. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> are they at yeah. school? Yeah, they uh, they are at their grandmas uh, because their schools are closed here for one week. Okay. So they go uh, visit my my parents. Uh, yeah, for like one week, then they'll be back. And uh, so when they're back, do they come up and see you at the gym? Because I should imagine, you know, when you're starting your gym and building equipment, you have to do a lot of hours. So what time are you normally? What time do you normally get to the gym, Wallace? And what time do you normally finish? Uh, I open at five a.m. in the morning. That's when I have my first uh, personal training client, and then I close at nine p.m. So five to nine weekdays. Okay, and weekends. Weekends on a Saturday, I, I, I open at 7 up to 8 p.m. And wow. then on a Sunday, it's half a day from uh, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's a long week, uh, that is, Wallace. That's a long week. Do you have any staff or is it just you and your, you and your wife? Currently, it's just me and my wife. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. I remember those days. They're hard. <laughs> They're hard days, Wallace. But we don't. You don't do it for the yeah. money, do you? It's the passion. And then if you're passionate, everything else yeah. comes with it. You know. What yes. if he wasn't doing yes. what? If he wasn't doing that now, what would you be doing? What are your some of your friends doing for work? What would you be doing? Uh, I'll probably maybe be, be be doing some maybe security work, something like that, because that's what I was doing at first. When I finished high school, I started uh, working uh, in a casino. And at the same time, I was going to college for my certificate in uh, personal training. So I will still, I think I'll still be working in a gym or maybe some security company somewhere. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Because I have my certificate for personal training, uh, but I prefer uh, working at the hood here. Maybe if, if I didn't have the hood gym, I'll be maybe somewhere in some other gym working as a trainer. Or maybe doing security. And have you got any more aspirations to compete, or are you just going to be focusing on the business for now? Um, I'll be competing this December. That's oh. my plan. There'll be yeah, there'll be a show at the, the coast of Kenya. Uh, I last competed in uh, 2019, and uh, last year because of COVID, and uh, you know, yeah. I was prepping for another show, but it got cancelled <laughs> one week out. Imagine after all that dieting, then the show got cancelled. Yeah. The first, the first day of uh, what do you call it? Uh, Cup depletion was announced that uh, the show was cancelled no. because of uh, COVID. COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm make, yeah. What are you like when you're dieting? Are you terrible? Uh, are you moody? Or are you are you fine when you're dieting? I used to find it a bit hard towards the last few weeks. Yeah, 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 the last few weeks, especially for me, it's the last week. The last week is the hardest for me. The other weeks, I'm like, I'm okay, you know. I don't eat a lot. So for me, dieting is, is, isn't is that hard. But the last week when I reduce, like, I reduce my carbs more, it becomes too hard. Even I, I feel like my, what do you call it, my heartbeat drops yes. when I, on my last week. Like beating slowly, pop, pop, pop. No, that's the, the, the only hardest week for me, the week before the show. Yeah, I see, see, I think because you eat so naturally and you've got less information, you're so in tune with your bodies. Um, you know, we get distracted with too many shit. We've got too much of everything. Whereas you guys, you know, it's like going back 30 years, how it used to be in the UK. And that's a great thing. It's You know, I, I really wish I could get those days back where you've got that behind you and the welding and I wish I could go to back to that where now you know you've got the council asking for money you've got the landlord asking for money and all the pressures whereas you guys you know you seem a lot more freer and a lot more happier you know so you know for you uh, you know with you've got 
don't ever think like you're missing out on anything over here in the UK with uh, the fancy proteins and everything else. Because what you've got there, now you come across on here, you know, you've got so much more than us. We've, we have much, might have more to so we can just go to and get protein, get some green tea, get this, get that. And you may look in some of the magazines and think, oh, I wish I could have this protein drink or I wish I could go and buy this or I could go and buy that. But, you know, you know, you guys are an inspiration. I've seen you train. You train as hard, if not harder than us. And you've got a smile on your face. And who's the guy who plays the guitar, Wallace? Who's the guitarist? Who's the, who's the player? Is that you? It's me. Yeah, it's me. That's just a little hobby that I do. Yeah, and uh, I'm not really good at it, but you I are. like, uh, you know, when, you I'm rest, you <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm resting, when I'm resting, I've just eaten my meal, and uh, maybe I don't have client at, at the gym at that time, or maybe I can even do it in the gym when people are training there at the other side. I take my guitar, just a few thoughts here and there. Yeah, and I enjoy it. So, like you said, it's all about how you feel here. If something makes you happy, well, you go on and uh, do it, as long as you're not hurting other uh, other people. No, I mean, I've seen you with the guitar. And, uh, who, was, who was dancing on the last video I put on uh, Instagram last night? There was some guy who was dancing around, shaking, oh. shaking his ass. and his... <laughs> <laughs> That's another, another friend of mine, but he's from another part of, uh, of town. Yeah, he's a, that's also another small gym, another hardcore gym somewhere in another ghetto somewhere. In, it's called Rongai. It's called what? Rongai. Rongai. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rongai. And are you training today? What? Are you training today? No, no, today is my rest day. I train, I train on Monday, Tuesdays, and then I rest on Wednesdays, then do Fridays, I mean Thursdays and uh, Saturdays. Oh, brilliant! I mean, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna edit a clip and then I'm gonna put you playing the guitar and singing on, so people are gonna see you singing. Uh, because you know, I tell you, I tell you what, Wallace, I was surprised. I was surprised. So let's talk about some of this food. What's what's fufu? Fufu is a is a is a, is a small fish. Yeah, it's a mashed arrows. Mashed what? Mashed arrows. Oh, arrows. Mashed, it's like mashed potatoes. Yeah. And, and ugali? Ugali is, uh, you see, corn. Oh, yes. Yeah, then it's, it's uh, like some hard porridge made from corn. Okay. And we that one you can eat it, you can eat it with fish and uh, maybe vegetables, beans. Yeah, I see you. staple food here in Kenya. I've seen you eating some uh, tilapia the other day. Um, yes. Le just left the bones for the cat. That was all what was left. <laughs> <laughs> This, what I'm going to do, Wallace, uh, after this uh, call, I want you to DM me your address and I'm going to send uh, you and your uh, wife uh, some T-shirts over from Dino's Gym uh, because, you know, it's been an absolute inspiration talking to you. You know, it gives me a sense of hope and that there's people still out there doing the right thing for the right people. You know, and your dad and your mum should be yeah. really proud of you because, you know, I can see from... Is there, is there any way we could see the gym now or would you have to go downstairs? Would you lose connection? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I have the Wi-Fi here, so I'll just carry it. Go on, go on. Carry it downstairs. Show us the gym. All right. Let's see if it oh, works. Okay. Let's see if it works, Wallace. Okay. You, you just show me around. Just show me around, Wallace. Show me around. Okay, we can start with the, the workshop here. Yeah, okay, you show me. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, yes. This one is, this one is still under con uh, construction. I haven't finished it. Yes. There's a part, uh, there's a, a particular part I'm looking for to finish it. Okay. Uh, until I get it, that's when I'll get it done. Oh. And then you see this. These are the weights. Oh, yeah, I see. I, I don't can know see. if you can see. Yeah, I can see. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, I can that's see the, the incline. Leg, uh, incline yeah, bench. Uh, this one is, yeah, this is an incline bench. Yeah. And uh, this one is a pull down. Oh, yeah, 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 I can see. Chain <laughs> pull down. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. and then we have a hyper extension machine there. Yes, I can see. Oh, brilliant, Wallace. Yeah. Yes, and there are all the weights. Oh, fantastic. And my welding machine. This one is this is my welding machine. It's a locally made welding machine. Oh. And it function, functions perfect. Oh. And the grind here, this one. Absolutely brilliant. Is there any way we can get out okay, of the gym? Me... Yeah, yes. That's where I'm heading to right now. Fantastic. You're making me so happy. This is making me so happy, Wallace. 
Okay, so we are heading to the gym now. Like I told you, the gym is just beneath my house. Yeah. This is this is a staircase. Now I'm going to the gym. Yeah. I can see. I can hear the music. Yeah. <laughs> This is the area that we do lunches. Ah, the lunches. You see that? Ah, brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. All right. And now we go to the gym now. Okay, guys, say hi to Dino. Hello, everybody. Yeah. How you That's doing? That's my wife over there. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah, and here is the rest of the gym now. This is the pull down machine. Yeah. The pull over. Yeah. And you have, I know, you, you know this? Let's have a look. Is it a chin up? No, I can't see. Yeah, chin up. The Nautilus. The yes. old Nautilus. Yes, Nautilus, yes. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. And then we have a flat bench there. Yeah. You can see, you can see the way the guys are training here. Yeah, I can see. Jealous. Uh, and the way they are resisting the weight, they are not just throwing the weight up and down. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, oh, oh, you've got some mirrors. That's nice. That's good. The dumbbells look great, yes, Wallace. And we have, we have weights. The weights all the way up to there. Oh, fantastic. Up to 64, 64 kilos. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we have this guy here. This guy is a boxer, but he comes to what do you call them? Pugilist, the one who throw punches in the ring. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but he comes here for you know for the strength and power. And power. I'm sure he's got lots of yes. Kenyan power. Yes. Then we have the squat rack. Brilliant. Absolutely the brilliant. Bench, uh, the push, the back, oh, the yeah, back for the back, yeah, yeah. Have you made that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I made this. In fact, you can use it for for supported uh, T-bar or you can remove. Let me show you just a second. Yeah, okay. Or you can remove that and pull it backward like that. And then you do just the normal T-bar. Oh, brilliant, Wallace. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. That's fantastic. Okay. What a, and then it, we have a leg curl here. What? A, what? what a, is it warm in there? Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, no, it's it's a bit cold. It's around uh, eleven. It's roasted. Eleven degrees Celsius. It's hot in England at the moment. It's thirty something. Crazy. But that looks great. That looks great. Yeah. That's the leg curl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of this must. Yeah, this one is a, a magnum. Some of this I didn't build on my own. Yeah. I bought them. Yeah. And then we have a. Uh, the medex leg extension. Yeah. Oh my God, that's massive. That's massive. Yeah. And then we have uh, this the uh, leg press and hack spot combo. This one I made. Yeah, I love it. Love it. That's brilliant, Wallace. Absolutely. And then we have a Nautilus adapter. Yeah, I know, I know. And there's Dorian behind. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, uh, picture of Dorian. Cheers, Dorian. And uh, this is the only cardio equipment we have. This one, yeah. the bike, and then this one and the other one. And then we have, that was me when uh, I couldn't compete oh, on you, the, the you show look, that was cancelled because of COVID. You look fantastic, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. What a great gym. What a great, yeah. great gym. What a great gym. Oh, I'm so pleased that you showed me. Yes, it really makes makes me, it makes me just feel uh you know uh, I don't know it's just it's an absolute inspiration mate an inspiration just take take the phone outside and I'm yeah. gonna just say goodbye to you so, oh, okay. I can, so I can hear you properly that's fabulous absolutely fabulous that's. I, I tell you what, Wallace, you've made an old man very, yes. very happy today. An old man very, very happy because uh, with people like you in the world doing what you're doing for those youngsters and your wife having a go and helping you, mate, and making your own equipment, eating your food, playing the guitar, getting that guy dancing, you've got a great thing going on there. So you just keep doing what you're doing. We'll keep in touch. 
You've got my phone number now, Wallace. So you DM me your address. I will send you some T-shirts yeah. of Dino's gym for for you and your wife. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. And it will make you. Yes. It will make you strong, just like Mister Yates. So I, I just want yeah, to say. Yeah, just like Mister Yates. <laughs> so Wallace is is also another. Yeah. Go on. It's just a what? Uh, I'm saying even Yates is uh, another mentor of mine because of his training style. Yeah. He's a, he's a special friend of yeah, mine, yeah. Dorian. He's a special friend. Uh, I'm yeah. going to get him on a podcast very, very soon. And I'll make sure that uh, I send him this. When this video has been edited and I've got you playing the guitar, I'll make sure that uh, Dorian gets to watch this video as well. And everybody will share it and make uh, Hood Jim uh, on everybody's tip of the tongue. So when people are feeling a bit down, feeling a bit sorry for themselves, they can look at the video of Hood Jim. See you. What's your wife's name? Christine. Christine. Yeah. So they can see Wallace and Christine doing some fantastic things in uh, in Kenya there. So I just want you to say uh, what a fantastic day to pump some iron in Kenya. Yeah, it's a very nice day. The weather is, uh, although it's a bit cold, as you can see, I'm, the way I'm dressed, I have this, I have a jacket. It's a bit cold, but once you get in there and you start pumping, it starts becoming warm. You start feeling warm. And how do you say in Kenyan, the call of the iron is far too strong in Kenyan? The call of the... In Swahili. In Swahili. Uh, let me, let me, let me try. Go I, I don't then. know. <laughs> the, Go call iron, the, call, the call for iron is... The call for iron is too strong. The call of the iron is far too strong. The, uh, the call of the iron is far uh, too strong. Uh, muito. <laughs> Let me try this. I'm Go not on. sure if it is 100%, but Muito wachuma unanguvu sana. Well, that's good enough Are for me. me. That's good enough for me. <laughs> and I always, I always ask yeah. the people I interview, in one word, in mm. one word only, mm. what would sum up mm. Wallace? What what would you if you're on your grave there? What would it say, Wallace? Would it be uh, uh, relentless, inspirational? What, what what one word would, would sum up Wallace? What one word? I'll say ambitious. There you go. There you yeah, go. I'll say I'll say ambitious because once I target on something, I really like pushing forward towards it. Well, I've, I've, so got, ambitious. I've got another word, and I think another word is inspirational. Uh, you're an inspiration Inspire to my, you're, an inspira you're an inspiration <laughs> yeah. to myself, uh, to the people in your village, yeah. your mum and dad, and everybody else. So, from England and the UK, I just want to say goodbye, Wallace. Keep in touch. Send me your address. I shall yeah. send you some Dino's clothing over. Wear it with pride because I've really enjoyed talking to you. And thanks so much for joining me on the Call of the Iron. The, that, the, the bodybuilding flame, Wallace, it will never go out for us. Never. Go on, so, of course, and, Dino. And Thank a, you, Dino. Have a happy birthday as well. God bless you, my friend. God bless you too. Thank you. Goodbye. No, I am no lie. No, I am no lie. No, I am no lies. No, I am no lies. Say, do you remember when we used to live? Some stones there in Kawakore. Yeah, yeah. Abisa, what is No, I am no lies. Look!